This is a pastor from Jacksonville, good friend of our preachers. And so please, let's give a warm round of applause as he comes and preaches. Pastor Finn. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, come on, guys. You can do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. My name's Adam. What's your name? T. T. Only, is this the only guy with the name? Your name's Adam? That's a nice blue tie. I might trade you at the end of the service there. I saw a guy, he had a red tie. Where's that guy? Are those hands on your tie? That's cool. I like your tie. That's pretty neat. I want to say, first of all, I want to say thank you to Pastor Pledger for giving me the opportunity to speak. And, uh-oh, I'm muted. Well, good thing I can talk loud, all right? Now, I want you guys, if you have your Bible, go ahead and go to 1 Samuel chapter 3. First, woo! They turned you up. They turned me way up. All right, there's a guy in the ceiling talking too. Let's get kind of loud. All right, guys, I want to talk about a young man named Samuel this morning. And he was a priest. He's called a faithful priest. He was also a prophet of God. And he was a judge. He's a very unique person in that he had three separate titles, three separate offices, how the Lord used him throughout his life. Now, before we go to Samuel, you can stay there. Um, I always encourage the folks at my church to start their day by reading the proverb of the day. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? What is the date today? Somebody help me out. 22nd. 22nd. T. Come on, bro. Where's your watch? No watch. Okay, all right. Well, I'll give you I'll give you a pass on that one. All right, all right. So it is the 22nd, and in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, it says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, you guys have probably heard that verse before, right? And I know some of you guys don't like being called a child anymore. I get that. I've been there. Um, I do want to share with you, when I was about your age, I decided that I wanted to live for the Lord. And I'm thankful that I had parents that had the foresight and the vision to teach me the word of God, to put me uh, under the instruction of the Lord in a local church where they preach the Bible. Um, I remember going out with my father when I was very young and he would run bus routes and go out soul winning. Now, how many of you guys do things like that? Well, we need a few more to get involved in that. Listen, this is the work of the Lord. This is the most important thing that you can do with your life is to serve the Lord. And we're all, you know, it's kind of interesting. Think about this. Right now, you have a choice. Today, you have a choice. If you don't want to listen to the word of God, you can tune me out, right? If you don't want to open your Bible and read it, you can let it collect dust. If you don't want to hear God, guess what? Right now, you have a choice. You have that option. But one day, when you pass... From death unto life, when you go into eternity, you will not have a choice. You will stand before your Creator, and then you will listen. That's right. I would encourage you to listen now. Yes, I would encourage you to seek the Lord and read His Word while there's time. I want to talk about Samuel this morning. If you're in, in 1 Samuel chapter 3, look at verse number 1. All right, thank you. 1 Samuel chapter 3. Verse number one, and the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass that at that time when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, here am I. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just ask that you would take this time this morning and direct our hearts toward you. Lord, I pray that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit and give me the mind of Christ. Lord, I ask that you would give me the words that this generation needs to hear. Lord, there are things going on in this world that have some concern, but Lord, we know that you are in charge. Lord, I ask through the preaching and the reading of the word this morning that you would change our hearts and our lives and give us a desire to serve you. And I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now listen, Samuel here, 
It says that the child Samuel, you see this in verse 1, the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord. I want to tell you this, it is never too early to dedicate your life to the service of the Lord. It is never too early to decide, I want to spend my time on this earth working for God, for God's glory. Let me tell you something, one day you will not have a choice but to hear the Lord. You will stand before the Lord. You will be judged by your works while you're here. And at that moment, you're going to have a lot of regrets. All of us will have regrets. We will have things we wish we'd spent more time doing. We will have regrets for being selfish. But if you'll purpose in your heart now to prepare for eternity, to consider that one day you'll stand before God Almighty, and really dedicate yourself to learning the Bible for the purpose of teaching. We're talking about Samuel here. He was first a priest. He learned the ordinances. He learned the order that God liked to do things and how God wanted and, and learned all of that instruction. Later, he became a prophet under the nation. He was preaching from the top to the bottom. He was going around in a circuit. He was teaching people what God wanted. Listen, first you have to learn something before you can teach it. Is there anybody in here that can teach me some algebra this morning? No, I'm with you, brother. That's right. I need some help. Nobody. Who can teach some out? Right there. There's a young lady. Uh, Brother Aaron over here. A couple over here. All right. Very good. Now, listen. Algebra will get you places in life, but not as much as the word of the Lord. And I'm not encouraging you to skip algebra. Learn it. You're smart enough. The Lord's giving you a good brain. And listen. So he says, and the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord. Minister means serve. That means he did what God wanted. You know, sometimes we serve God by serving other people. Maybe you help out around the church or at home and you're doing it to really honor God ultimately. Uh, but it says when, when, when the Lord in verse 4 it says, The Lord called Samuel and he answered. What's he say? Here. Here oh, come on, guys. You can do better than that. What's he say? Here he said, Here am I. Now, when the Lord calls and he says, I need someone to work for me, are you willing to say, here am I? That's good. I hope so. I hope so. One of the first things I want to point out here, though, is it does say that he was a child. Samuel was a child. And I, again, I want to say it's never too early to dedicate yourself unto the Lord. When I was about your age, and I really, I say that jokingly, I don't know how old I was. But I was raised in church. I was raised in Christian schools. I did some homeschooling. And at a point in my life, early on, I decided I wanted to do the right thing even when it was hard. And listen, I'm not perfect. I have a lot of mistakes. But I want you to know there also came a point in my life I decided, you know what? I want to be somebody that's willing to learn the Bible enough to share it with other people that haven't heard. Do you understand there are people that don't know? That Jesus is God, that he died for their sins, and that by trusting in him, you can have eternal salvation and forgiveness of your sins. There is a lost and dying world out there, and where will they go without Jesus Christ? Hell. I can't hear you. Hell. Hell. If you would, go to Jeremiah chapter 1. Go to Jeremiah chapter 1. I want to show you how Jeremiah, in the same way, was young when he decided to serve the Lord. And I want to encourage you, while you're young, to decide to serve the Lord. You should serve God young. You should start now. You are without excuse. You have a perfectly preserved copy of God's Word. This is a message to you. You guys ever heard what Bible stands for? B-I-B-L-E? It means basic instructions before leaving earth. You better read the instruction book before you leave earth if you want to obey God. Now, you're in Jeremiah chapter 1. If you would, look at verse number 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. I want you to know this. God knows every baby. God knows who you will be before you're formed. God has a purpose for you. God also sees your choices. Listen, God does not manipulate your choices or force you to do anything. When you sin or mess up in life, you cannot say, the devil made me do it. And you cannot say, God made me do it. You must 
uh, admit your own fault and say, you know what, that is my mistake, that is my error, I have sinned before the Lord, and you need to, be, to con confess that. He says, before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, that means set apart for a holy purpose. He says, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Listen, a prophet is someone that preaches. Prophesying means preaching. Some prophecy has a future fulfillment yet to come. But I want to tell you, when you open up the Word of God and you read what it says to someone else, you say, thus saith the Lord, you are a prophet, you are prophesying. Now here Jeremiah was a young man that God was using. And he says, and this is God saying, I knew thee, I formed thee, I ordained thee. Look at verse 6. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. I am a child. If I put you on the spot this morning, and I, and I picked a verse out of the Bible, and I said, come, teach us what it means. I imagine a few of you, yea, many of you may say, I cannot speak, I cannot prophesy, I'm just a child. But what if I asked you about a video game? Uh-oh. Or a sports team, or how some rules work in a game. What if I asked you if you could build me a castle out of Legos? How many think they could do that? Oh yeah, amen. All right. Now listen, your heart's desire should be to know the Bible well enough to be able to teach it to somebody else. And it only comes by reason of use, by investing your time reading the Word of God so that you can share it with other people. Look what he says again in verse 6. Then said I, Ah, oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. This is just as Jeremiah crying and saying, God, I can't do this. You've given me too much to do. I am just a child. How can I go out to the nations and tell them what you're going to do? Why would they listen to me? Listen, when God gives you something to do, he's going to give you the words, and he's going to go with you. He's going to give you the ability to be successful. He just needs us to trust him. He says, I cannot speak for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, say not I am a child, for thou shalt go. What's he say? Go. Oh, come on, guys. Come on. I know it's 8.30, 9 o'clock. Wake up, wake up. What's he say? Go. What does God want you to do? Go. What he says, verse number seven, he says, But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. God wants you to get the word in your heart so you can open up your mouth and speak to the nations. Are you memorizing the Bible? That's good. Are you learning the Bible? Are you studying the Bible so that you have an understanding that you can share with others? I hope so. Verse number 8, he says, Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Listen, you know what peer pressure is? Have you guys ever heard of that? Yeah, we have a pier down at, at the beach, and when the waves start hitting it, it moves around, it puts pressure on it. Oh, no, I'm sorry, wrong, wrong peer pressure. Hold on, wrong definition. Peer pressure is when your friends, your family, encourage you to do something you don't want to do. And I want to tell you, through the power of the Holy Spirit, you can reject that. You can say, no, I'm going to stand for the Lord, even if you think I'm weird. You know, God calls us peculiar. We should be separate and sanctified. We should be different than the rest of the world. You should be identified as a Christian, first and foremost. And when friends in school or out of school or in church or in your family try to tell you to do something wrong, you need to say, nope. You can call me weird. You can call me funny. God made me unique and special, and he's going to use me, and I will not defile myself. Amen. Amen. God has many, many people, ladies and men, that God has used for years, and they started out as a child. They decided, I will be different. I don't care what the rest of the world's doing. I don't care what's popular. They want to show me some song or something on the Internet or some music video. Forget that stuff. That's garbage. Get in the word of the Lord. Amen. Get this in your heart. Amen. Be not afraid of their faces. You don't have anything to be afraid of. He says, for I am with thee. When God tells you to go, know this. He is with you. He will go with you. He will help you. He says, I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, behold, I have put my words and thy mouth. See, I have set thee over the nations. He says, hey, I'm making you in charge of the nations. And you have the highest authority that exists on the earth, the most high God. 
When you stand on the word of God and you preach through the power of the Holy Spirit of God, you have all authority. If you would, let's go back to 1 Samuel 3. Go back to 1 Samuel 3. There are many men in the Bible. Uh, Josiah was a good example one where it says that he was eight years old when he began to reign. And it says that he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. He didn't turn to the left hand or the right. He did the right things before God as an eight-year-old. He reigned for ten years and then when he was 18, he began to build up the house of the Lord. And he was changing the entire nation. Now, who in here is eight or has ever been eight? Few of you are awake. Have you never been eight years old? Oh, gotcha. Okay. You are eight or have been eight. Raise your hand. Okay. All right. All right. Hold on. Hold on a minute. All right. Put your hands down. Raise your right hand if you ate some breakfast this morning. Now, while your right hand is up, raise your left hand if you drank something this morning. Some water, some milk, some OJ, some of that purple stuff. Okay. Most of you have some nutrition. Now do 100 jumping jacks. Go ahead. All right, just kidding. All right, just kidding. Stay with me, guys. You're back in 1 Samuel 3. I just want to impress on you that the Lord wants to use you, that there is a lack of people willing to work for God, and we need you. That's right. Here am I. I'm ready to go. I'll open my mouth. God will go with me, and he will give me the words. I have nothing to be afraid of, and I want you guys to understand this. You are at an advantage to everybody else in the world. You ever heard of the one percenters? Well, spiritually speaking, that's you. If you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and you've trusted him for salvation, you're saved, you're passed from death unto life. Amen, thank God for that. If not, come and talk to me afterwards. But if you are, God has a plan for you. God has a plan for you. You will be the next generation that will change things. You will be the next generation that will be different and peculiar and separate and sanctified. The rest of this world is only going to get weirder and weirder. It's going to wax colder and colder. It's going to get more and more strange. But you need to conform yourself to the image of Christ. You need to become more like Jesus Christ himself. You're in 1 Samuel chapter 3 again. Look at verse 1. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days, for there was no open vision. There was no open vision. Now, when he says that the word was precious, now precious, this Bible is very precious to me. I've had it for many years. It fell apart. I used to call it my loose leaf edition Bible, and I had to have it rebound. I mean, this is my favorite. It's, a, it's literally called a super giant print, or you can call it the, the blind man version. I can see it from here, okay? Uh, so that is very precious to me. When you think of things that are precious, the word precious, precious means valuable, valuable. Precious means special, important. Precious also means rare. And hear what he's saying. In Samuel's time, as he was a child being raised up to work for God, it was rare that anybody worked for God. There was very few people doing the right thing, and the whole nation needed some help, and Samuel was one of the people that God chose to come and help. Now, in the Bible, the word precious is used to define a few different things. Uh, God is waiting, he says, for the precious fruit of the earth. He's talking about the souls of those that are saved that he will reap at his final harvest. The precious fruit. God calls your soul, believing on him, sealed unto the day of redemption. That is precious in the Lord's eyes. Another thing that the Bible calls precious is gold, silver, precious stones, jewels, and gems. You guys know what I'm talking about? Have you guys ever heard of precious metals? You know what I'm talking about? I brought something I want to share with you this morning. Now, this is not special. This is a Federal Reserve note, a.k.a. a $1 bill. This is $1, and this is $1 from 100 years ago. This is a silver dollar. It's one ounce of silver. It is exactly 100 years old. The date on it, 1921. 1921. Now, which one do you think is more precious? The silver, of course. In fact, I looked it up last night on eBay to buy one of these. It was at least $47, if not 50. Now, wait a minute. Think about this. $1 $1 right here. And here, I want to share this with you guys. Pass that around. Here's another one. This one's only 99 years old. Pass that around. I want everybody to hold that. I want you to understand what precious metal feels like. I want you to understand how rare and special. When God looks at you and your soul, he considers you precious. But more important than that, this was a time when the word of God was precious. 
Could you imagine if there were no Bibles? Could you imagine if you lived in a country where the Bible was illegal or out of print and it was only in the hearts of people? Maybe we'd huddle together in a house and just read God's word and consider it rare and valuable and most important. You know, that silver dollar that I'm passing around. I got one more. This is a newer one. Listen to this. This dollar, that dollar from 100 years ago, listen to this, it would buy one loaf of bread. It would buy a dozen eggs, a gallon of milk, and a pound of steak. Now, can you, can you get that for this? Something's wrong with our money. Something's wrong. We've been deceived in what value is. Wouldn't you agree? I want to tell you that the Word of God is the most valuable thing on this earth. Now, you guys keep passing them dollars around. Don't make me come shake you down and find out who pocketed it. You wouldn't steal from a preacher in the house of the Lord, would you? All right, all right, all right. Don't hold it forever. Pass it on, pass it on. So it says here in verse number, we look at chapter 3, verse 1, and the, and the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. God considers you precious. He considers his word precious. And in this instance, he needed a Samuel that was willing to say, here am I, Lord. I'll learn the word. I'll preach the word. And I got to tell you guys, we live in a generation like that today, don't we? We live in a generation that's wicked and weird and defiled. They want to steal your mind. Listen to me. Satan wants to get in your ear through your music, through the TV, through your phone, through YouTube. Satan wants to steal your Bible from you. But it's your choice to make the Word of God special, rare, precious, valuable in your eyes. It's your choice to choose to make this your most valuable, most valuable possession. If you'll do that and put it in your heart, God can use you for great and mighty things. This is your job. This is our ultimate purpose on this earth. When you say, what's my purpose in this earth? What kind of a career will I have? What kind of a family will I have? What's coming next? If you'll set the Lord before you and have a goal to serve the Lord with all your heart, he'll take care of the little details. Let's continue reading. Verse 2. Well, actually, let's just pick up in verse 4. He says, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered and said, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou calledst me. And he said, I called not. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again Samuel, and Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. So this means Samuel had not, the Lord had never revealed himself to Samuel yet, but as the Lord did, he reveals himself and here am I, ready to serve. Who needed some help? Here I am, right? Good spirit, a good attitude, verse 8. And the Lord sent Samuel again the third time. I'm sorry, the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood and called at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then, the, then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. I want everybody to say that. Speak. 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 For thy servant heareth. You guys are good. Brother Aaron, you're doing a good job of these. You guys are all right. Now listen, do you have that attitude? I want you to know, when you open the Bible, this is what you say to God. Lord, speak to me. I'm listening. Speak for thy servant heareth. Lord, I need something from you. I need an answer. And this is the one and only answer book that is timeless without error. And it's written for you. He knew you before you were formed in the womb. He's called you. He wants you separate and sanctified. He wants to use you. But you need to say, Lord, speak to me. I'm listening. I'm opening the word. I'm seeking for you. And I trust that you'll talk to me. You guys jump ahead to verse number 19. Jump ahead to verse number 19. Now they said I could preach for an hour and a half. Is that correct? Well, you guys, you guys probably have math or arithmetic. What do you have next? Math. math. You guys want me to you want me to go a little longer? Yeah, yeah. T. Uh, T. 
guarantee you're going to get both of us in trouble. I shouldn't listen to you, all right? Adam, what's the truth? What do you have next? Amen. Geometry. Now, that's actually kind of fun. Nah, come on. Give it a chance. <laughs> you're, in, you're still in Samuel. Look at uh, chapter 3. Go to verse number 19. Go to the end of the chapter, guys. Stay with me. We've only got a couple more minutes, and I want you guys to learn something. Verse number 19. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. Think about that. And did let none of his words fall to the ground. You know how precious he, he realized the word was? It was so important and so valuable, he decided, I don't want it to fall to the ground. What if I were to throw this coin at you? He didn't let it fall to the ground. Amen. Thank you, young man. What's your name? Logan. Logan, thank you, sir. Now think about that. This is a $50 coin. If I were going to throw it to you, would you let it fall to the ground? No. I've got a proverb of the day for you. If I read it to you, will you listen to it? Will you receive it in your heart like it's valuable, like it's a gold coin? Will you? That's God's word unto you. God has a plan for you. He says, And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan, that's up north, to Beersheba down south, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again to Shiloh, and the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. He, God keeps coming by the word. God has a purpose for this young man. Everybody knew that this guy had a greater purpose in life than geometry. It was to be a prophet unto the nations. It was to preach the word. God highly esteemed him. If you would, go to Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. I want to encourage you to serve the Lord while you're young. I want to challenge you to decide that for the rest of your life, you will look into the Word of God and figure out what the will of God is for your life, and you will base your priorities and your goals on what the Bible says. Not what your friends say. Not what your family says. If your family says, well, you need to go to Harvard and learn to do this. You say, you know, first I need to go to the Word of God and figure out what God's plan is for me. Right. You know God wants every generation to prepare to raise the next generation. Do you know God's purpose for your life is that you would marry, keep yourself pure, marry a young lady, guide her. You work hard so that she can serve God by raising up more children that will serve God. If we will do this and focus on the next generation, not just ourselves, not just what we want, then God can change this country. Listen, our country needs some changing. There's some things in this country that when God looks at it, it's found lacking and it starts in the churches. Revival must begin in the churches and it starts in your heart. It starts in your heart where you will decide, I'm going to live for God for the rest of my life. Whether it's persecution because I'm a Christian or just smooth sailing, it doesn't matter to me. I want to live for the Lord. If you will decide this, then God will give you your heart's desire. If your desire is... To work for the Lord, He will take care of you. He will provide for you. You're in Isaiah chapter 6. This is quite a chapter. Can you imagine being in God's throne room? Can you imagine seeing a vision confronted with God? Look what he says in verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and His train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each with one with six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. Listen, this is a special angel that has six wings, two covering his face, two covering his feet, and two of them flying. This is part of God's train. If you've ever seen a train, it, it starts and then it ends with a caboose. Well, God was up there showing His glory that He's high and lifted up above everything He's created. And all of His creation was there proclaiming how awesome God was. Look at verse 3. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. Listen, when you look outside, when you look out the window, when you drive down the road, you're looking at God's creation. It's amazing what modern, the modern marvels and inventions and architecture, boy, we can create some awesome stuff, can't we? 
You take the smartphone. Hey, Amen. This guy. <laughs> I like you, Ty, buddy. Now think about it. For, for the past 10 years, we've been having these phones in our hand that's as, as strong and powerful as a computer. Better than the computers of 10 years ago. Man can create some neat stuff. The problem is what comes across it. If there's something in here that contradicts the word of God, you need to throw that out and you need to choose the word of God. Right. I'm here to warn you that the devil wants to use a cell phone to pollute your mind, to defile your heart, to steal your innocence, to captivate you. This cell phone can become an idol. It will cause you to covet things. There's a little lady on our block. Whenever we go out walking, we see her. She's 93 years old, and she's a Christian lady. And uh, to me, that means she must have obeyed her parents. That was the promise in the Bible, right? They uh, live long on the earth. And she tells me about all 11 grandchildren, and one of them she mentions every time. She's three years old. She calls me up, and she tells me all this stuff she wants. I don't know where she gets it. I said, Miss Davis, she's watching TV. She's watching her phone. And it says, buy this baby doll. You need this special toy, buy this dress, get this movie, right? And so the three-year-old has become covetous because she's allowing her eyes to be focused on something that's not from God. Listen, I want to warn you, your generation is going to have to fight it more than the rest. That cell phone can become an enemy unto the work of the Lord in your life. And I want you to decide now that the Bible is more precious than a phone. Amen. You understand me? We're in Isaiah 6. We see verse 3, And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of Him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. This is Isaiah saying, When he saw how holy and perfect and awesome God was, he was afraid. Listen, every knee will bow before God. You have a choice to listen to God now, or you'll do it when you stand before Him in eternity. And when He stood before God, He said, I'm undone. I'm, I'm, can you imagine taking one of these flags and getting a thread and ripping it until it just falls apart into threads? That's undone, unraveled. I'm worthless. I'm falling apart when I stand before a holy God. He says, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Here's the problem. The world wants to get in your ears and get you to say unclean things. Don't do it. God's called you to be a prophet. God's called you to prophesy His Word, to sing and worship the Lord, not to sing what some other person put on your phone or the TV. Those things are opposites. His attitude was humble. Woe is me, I'm undone. I'm falling apart, Lord, I'm nothing before you. Then, look at verse 6. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched my lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. Listen, thank God for the precious blood of Jesus Christ which was put on the altar in heaven. This man's sin was forgiven because of what Jesus would do. Listen, your sin has been forgiven by Jesus Christ if you will receive the gift of God. Romans 6.23 says, uh, the wages of sin is death. He's saying the fruit that you deserve, the payment that you deserve is death and hell, the lake of fire, the second death. If we got what we deserved, we would wake up in a hot hell. Fiery torment with worms and chains and weeping and gnashing of teeth. And once you're in there, you never get out. The wages of sin is death, but here's the good news. The gift of God. The gift of God. Now, is a gift free? Is a gift free? If I said, hey, who wants a dollar bill? It's a free gift. What do you have to do to get it? What's your name, young man? Luke, did you have to be good to get that? Did you have to turn from all your sin? Did you have to come to church to get that? Well, I guess you had to be here presently today. When I offered the gift, the only thing that was required of him was to understand he's really offering this gift. And you know what? I want it. And cheers. God bless you. 
The gift of God is eternal life. Now, how long does eternal life last for? Forever. Like it stops after 100 years? No. Like a million years? No. Well, now, does eternal life stop when you lie again or you say something unclean? No, thank God for the forgiveness that Jesus Christ provides to us, right? Thank God for that. Once and for all, he says in Hebrews, once you're saved, you're always saved. It is everlasting life that will never cease. And it's a free gift. He says the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We only get it one way. Through God. Through Jesus Christ, our very Lord, our Creator, our Redeemer. So he purges his lips, he says. And look at verse 8. Also I heard a voice from the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? I'm asking you that question today. I'm asking you this question today. We have a problem in America. We have a problem in Middleburg. We have a problem in Jacksonville. People are not preaching the Word of God. They're not reading the Word of God. They're not living the Word of God. And I'm here to ask you, who will we send? What's the Bible say? What's it say? I can't hear you. Here am I, send me. Do you believe that? Say it again. Here I send me. Amen. If you mean that in your heart, if you're willing to say, you know what, God? I feel like I don't fit in in this world anyway. What's going to happen if they call me weird for being a Christian? I'd rather be weird for Christ than to go with the flow and end up where everybody else ends up, destroying their life because of their own covetousness and lust. Here am I, send me. That was his attitude. Lord, I'm not perfect. I'm unclean. I'm just a child. How can I speak up? I'll go with you. I'll give you the words if you're willing to say, here am I, send me. Now listen, you're in a church. You're in a school with a multitude of opportunities. There are so many different ways that they've already put together that you can go serve. All you have to do is show up. Don't they have, they have like homeless ministries. You guys have soul winning ministries, bus ministries. What else? Missionaries. Help me out, brother Aaron. Sunday school, hey, cleaning the church. There's all these different ways that you can help God. And all you have to do is show up and say, here am I. Coach, put me in the game. I'm ready to go. God told me to work, and I'm here to work. What can I do to help? Here am I. Send me. And he said, go. Right away. Look at verse 9. And he said, go. That's God's command for you. If you're willing to say, I'll go, then he will put you to work. Here am I. And he said, go. Go. And tell this people that's your job. Go to Matthew 28 and we'll finish there. Matthew chapter 28. Go to the very end of the chapter. This is famously called the Great Commission. This is God's plan for your life. This is the purpose of a local New Testament church. This is the heart's desire of your parents and your teachers when you come to church, you come to school here. It's that you would learn the Word of God. And learn what God's purpose is for your life. And once you figure that out, you say, here am I. They'll say, go. We'll put you to work. We'll give you an opportunity. But you need to make a decision. You need to decide that you're going to live the rest of your time for God. Matthew 28, look at verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto all them, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now, if God has all power, if Jesus has all power in heaven and in earth, can he open doors for you here? Can he help you understand the word when you say, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth? Can he help you understand the Bible and memorize it? Verse 19, go, go ye therefore and teach all nations. God wants you to teach. Now, uh, who, I asked the question earlier. Who could teach me algebra? Can anybody in here teach me what one plus one equals? Raise your hand. What is it, young man? Amen. Do you know how he was able to teach that to me? Because he learned it. He studied it. He's ready to go. What are you studying? What are you studying? What are you studying? If you'll study the Word of God, God has a plan for you. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things. Now that's pretty hard. Does it say all things? You mean like the whole Bible? This is God's plan for you. If you're already saved, once you're saved, He wants you to go and preach the Gospel, get people saved. Then get them baptized in the first step of obedience. And then He wants you to be able to learn and teach the entire Bible to anybody. He wants you to be able to have an answer to them that ask of you. 
Well, what does it mean to be a Christian? What do I have to do? What's so special? Well, let me ask you about dinosaurs. You say, ah, there's an answer to that in the Word of God. It's in the Bible, don't you know? Can you defend dinosaurs according to the Bible? Can you defend creation? Can you explain how God created things? Again, verse 20 says, Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. When you say, Lord, here am I, I will go for you. God will say go. He will put you in the action. He will give you an opportunity to use what you've learned. As you begin to teach, you may run into issues or obstacles or problems or hard questions, but I want you to know that God will go with you. In fact, when the children of Israel went into the promised land, didn't God go in before them and prepare it? If you feel in your heart, that God has a plan for you to serve Him in ministry, whether it be through music or missions or just being a faithful church member, raising a family. If you will be faithful to God, He will go with you. God has a plan for your life, and I want to encourage you to serve God while you're young. Don't wait till you're on your deathbed. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank You for Your Word. Lord, I pray that you would put these words in our heart and change us. Lord, I pray that you would just stir up a desire through the Holy Spirit. Lord, I ask that you would use the children in this room and the young adults, the ladies and the men. Lord, I ask that you would use us to serve you through a difficult generation. Lord, I ask that you would empower us to change those that are around us. Lord, we know that there's power in your word. Would you please help us to make it a priority to get it in our heart? We love you, Lord. I ask that you would keep us safe today. Lord, I ask that you would plant these seeds of your word in the hearts of the young that have heard it. And Lord, we trust you to give the increase. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.